The orphanage of La Pieta was an orphanage in 14th century Venice um, for illegitimate, abandoned, and orphaned girls. And there were a lot of orphanages around Venice at the time, but the interesting thing about this one was that this one was all about music. And every single girl who stayed there had an instrument, whether she sang or played like the oboe or the flute, and they would make music all the time. And Conductors and composers would come from Venice to teach these girls and they wouldn't last very long because the girls were all very troublesome. But um, one of the composers slash conductors was Vivaldi. And so after he wrote so many songs for them, they got to be known as Vivaldi's girls. And these girls, the choir and the instrumental people would go all over Venice to churches all over Venice and they would perform, um, except they could never be seen while they performed because they were illegitimate girls and they weren't supposed to be seen because it's the 14th century. And so they would be behind the wooden pews in the churches that they couldn't be seen, but they could be heard really well. orphanage was around 40 to 60 students, so it's almost the same size as the Premier Ensemble, and their situation of being cloistered at the orphanage is actually really comparable to being in quarantine and cut off from the rest of the world. I think it's really cool that we're going to get to bring, like, new life to such an old piece. I really like that Vivaldi took pre-existing characters from the Bible and gave them more complex emotions and motives because a lot of the time in the Bible, the women are really two-dimensional. So Judith is from Betulia in Israel and the Assyrians were coming to defeat the Betulians. And Judith decides to save her city by using her beauty and charm to seduce the drunk Assyrian army general, Olofernes. She then cuts off his head and brings it back to the Betulians as a symbol of victory. And the Israelites are therefore able to drive the enemy Assyrians away. I'm super happy to have the role of Judith. To see an independent woman go and be the savior and be the hero in such a powerful way, I think is something that's really special and it makes me really excited to perform this opera. Insomno profundo si agit in merzus, non amplius sit vigil, non amplius sit vigil, qui dormiti. She's so clever, daring, courageous, and really devoted to her faith. It's usually the woman, you know, finding her lover and getting married and having a happily ever after. But I like how in this story, uh, that's not the case. The role that I am playing is Olofernes, and it's the role of a man in a female range, and it's written for a woman, which is so inspiring to me because in this production, they didn't need any men to play the strong men roles. I get to break gender norms, and I get to break female expectations. <laughs>
I think I can relate to these young women at the orphanage. Music is the most important thing to them and it's the way that they get through their day and it gives them hope, which is something that I've related to a lot. I think quarantine gives some sense of being trapped, but I also think that there's a huge difference in their possible career paths. Because if the girls want to pursue music in the orphanage, they have to stay there their whole life. And if we do, we can just laureate from chorus and choose how we want to study music. It's really admirable how they were able to commit to something and sacrifice so much just for music. But I think it's really sad that the girls had to give up so much um, to do music because I really do think that music is about that freedom and creativity and self-expression and being limited just because of the circumstances of society I think is really sad. I don't think I could ever stay in one place in order to do what I love, which is to sing. Um, but I totally respect that that's something they want to do. I think that pursuing passion, a lot about that is about having the freedom to kind of go where you want with that, and they didn't get that. I can definitely empathize with them about just the sisterhood that comes with being with so many women and doing like groundbreaking things in music with women, you know, that really forms a bond that you really cannot find anywhere else. And I'm sure they experienced it at the orphanage all those years ago.